Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. It's me again, Joel Pasqua, and for today's video, I am going to discuss an important concept about nursing, which is the anatomy and physiology of the nervous system. Anatomy and physiology in general is a very important concept because this is the basis of all the future discussions that you will be having in your nursing education. This includes now concepts like your maternal and child, pediatric condition, medical surgical nursing, um, very important po ang anatomy and physiology, and of course, even for your pharmacology. And a lot of students have been requesting for me to discuss a series of videos about anatomy and physiology, and uh, I am going to start the discussion with the nervous system. When I talk about nervous system, guys, it's all over our body. And when I talk about the anatomy and physiology of this system, I am just going to make a quick review. Like, it's a scan of the entire system. So let's start by defining what is nervous system. So nervous system uh, acts as the command center of our body. It controls everything from what we see, what we hear, what we feel, and all the emotions, everything about our body, including the voluntary and involuntary functions, it is being controlled by our nervous system. Without it, okay, there will be problems in terms of coordination and even sensing um, things, okay, or uh, adapting to stimuli and so on and so forth. That is why nervous system is very important and it's interconnected to all the system of our body. So when I talk about nervous system, as I've mentioned, this is the body's command system and it functions as, number one, it sends messages from various parts of your body to your brain and from your brain back out to your body to tell your body what to do. So basically, it receives the stimuli and in response to that stimuli, it will going to do something uh, based on the stimuli that you have received. Another one is it uses nerve cells called neurons, which is the building blocks of the nervous system, to send signals or messages all over your body. And these neurons are interconnected with synapses uh, that is um, uh, passing signal from one neuron to another in, in a 0 0.00 milliseconds. So that's how fast the body actually transmit um, the information because of these neurons. Now. It also um, provides electrical signals that travels among your brain, skin, organ, glands, and muscles. And just like I've mentioned, all throughout your body, nervous system has a say on it. Okay. Now, what are the types of neurons? So let me just move this picture here. So what are the types of neurons? So there are several types of neurons. Number one of types of neurons is your motor neurons from the word itself. Okay, we're going to define this later on. We also have your sensory, neur sensory neurons and your interneurons. Your motor neurons are the neurons responsible to take signals from your brain and spinal cord to your muscle, meaning from your brain, brain to your muscle. So it transmits the responses or the information from your brain into the muscle and for, for the body to respond to any stimuli. Okay, it helps you to move. Okay, and assist you with breathing, swallowing, and even speaking. While your sensory neurons, from the word itself, it takes information from your senses to your brain. So when I look at my laptop right now, and I see my um, the front of my laptop, so that is that information will be processed into my brain and will be interpreted as it is. Okay, and interneurons communicates between motor and sensory neurons. So be different. These are the connections between these uh, two types of neurons, the motor and the sensory neurons. Now, when I talk about your nervous system, there are several parts of the ner nervous system. And one of that is your central nervous system. And the second one is your peripheral nervous system. When I talk about your central nervous system, okay, it, it is comprises of your brain and the spinal cord. And the peripheral nervous system is... Uh, the nerves outside or that is moving outward from the spinal cord or from the brain itself okay let me just remove my picture here so let us continue okay this is what it looks like so as you can see uh the one in your uh, left left side of the screen is the cns or the central nervous system which has the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral nerve ver, nervous system are the the nerve the nerve uh the nerves that is actually all throughout our body 
okay, from the central nervous system. Okay, now, this is another thing. So central nervous system is composed by the brain and spinal cord and it contains relay neurons. Okay, while your peripheral nervous system is composed of your cranial nerves, spinal nerves, and peripheral nerves that contains now your sensory neurons and motor neurons. Once again, sensory neurons are the neurons that will absorb uh, the stimulus uh, that, that is um, uh, taken by our senses and will interpret it okay, by our central nervous system. And from the central nervous system, the interneurons will connect this to send the signal into the motor neurons and the motor neurons will react okay, or will make the response according to the stimulus that we have perceived using our senses. Okay, another one, when I talk about central nervous system, as I've mentioned, this is the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, so these are the parts of the brain. We're not going to talk this in the details because we are going to discuss more on the physiology of the nervous system. But in general, central nervous system comprises of your brain and your spinal cord. Okay, so this is how it looks like. And the central nervous system, as I've mentioned, the brain and the spinal cord, so the brain reads the signals from your nerves to regulate how you think, move, and feel, while the spinal cord is a long, thin, tubular structure that connects the brain to the peripheral nervous system. So the brain is basically the command center, and whatever information is processed in the brain will be passed into the spinal cord, and the spinal cord is connected to the peripheral nervous system. Okay, so from the receiving, which is the sensory neurons, going to your spinal cord to the brain, then to the brain, going to your inter uh, to your spinal cord, then to your interneurons, going to your motor neurons to create the response. That's, that's how this is, that's how the nervous system generally uh, functions. Now, the peripheral nervous system, on the other hand, is made up of a network of nerves, nerves, uh, nerve branches out from your spinal cord and this system relays information from your brain and spinal cord to your organs arms legs fingers and those which uh, were in it shows the responses that we have based on the stimuli that we have received okay so this is basically your peripheral nervous system okay out of the uh, brain and the spinal cord now when i talk about pns it is composed of the following number one the cranial nerves we also have your spinal nerves and your peripheral nerves cranial nerves are the nerves that emerge directly from the brain meaning they are not connected already to the spinal cord so from the brain it will now go uh, outside of the central nervous system which is now considered as peripheral nervous system okay release information between the brain and the parts of the body primarily to and from the regions of the head neck including the special senses of vision taste smell and your hearing while spinal uh, it has 12 pairs by the way okay and we're going to talk about that later on while your spinal nerves are mixed nerves which carries motor sensory and autonomic signals between the spinal cord and the body okay and it has 21 pairs we are going to talk about that later on and the last one is the peripheral nerves consists of nerves and uh, and ganglia which lies outside the brain and the spinal cord commonly okay it is uh, within our extremities okay or the farthest part of our body okay from the central part it connects the central nervous system to the limbs and organs essentially serving as the relay between the brain and the spinal cord and the rest of the body to discuss this into detail let's start first with your cranial nerve so in cranial nerve i know that you already have an idea with this one so we have 12 pairs of cranial nerve okay we do have your olfactory okay oculomotor optic trochlear trigeminal abducens vestibulocochlear facial hypoglossal glossopharyngeal vagus a uh, vagus glossopharyngeal accessory muscle and your hypo Glossal. So, para po mas maintindihan natin yan, so, this is olfactory, isa lang po ang ilong natin, we only have one nose, then optic, we have, we have two eyes, that's number two, oculomotor is the movement of the eyeball, especially upward, and the trochial naman po is downward, while the, while trigeminal, number five, is the three nerves from your mandibular, your facial, and in your eyebrow, okay, and we have your abducens, which is the lateral movement of the eye, we have your facial, okay, facial. So the best thing to do this is to 
ask the patient to smile, okay? And we have your vestibulococcular, number eight. That's your vestibulococcular. So this is also known as your acoustic nerve, which is hearing. Then we have number nine, which is your glossopharyngeal. We have to check for gag reflex. Vagus, which is also connected to our uh, heart, okay? Your vagus nerve response. And your hypo, uh, your accessory muscle is the sternoglidomastoid plus your uh, third so uh, shoulder muscles movement. So it's more on motor. And hypoglossal, number 12, which is the movement of the tongue. Okay, movement of the tongue. So if you had your anatomy and physiology in school, perhaps you are aware of the mnemonics, o -o -o, to touch and feel. Very good, velvet, ah, heaven. So that is basically the mnemonics we commonly use to memorize the cranial nerves. The second one is the spinal nerve. So spinal nerve is from the cervical collar down to your coccyx. And as you can see, there are 21 pairs, uh, a total of 8 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 uh, sacral, and 1 coccygeal nerve. Okay, 1 coccygeal nerve. Okay. So then it depends now on the location of the uh, problem later on. For example, if the patient had a spinal injury, it depends on what part of the spinal because C1 to C8 would be more on the uh, um, movement of the entire body. So the higher the problem, the higher the injury in the spine, the spinal nerve, the, the more severe the condition will be. Okay. And the last one is the peripheral, so this is basically outside of the spinal cord in your extremities and other organs. Now, the parts of peripheral nervous system, it divided into two, autonomic and your somatic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system regulates the activities you do without thinking, meaning these are the involuntary movements. Like for example, heart, you don't need to think for the heart to beat, it will automatically beat. Okay, while somatic guides your voluntary movements, it means to say voluntary, meaning these are the things that you need to think of before you can actually do them. For example, I want to grab my mouse, that's somatic, my heart is keep on pumping and I keep on breathing, that's autonomic nervous system. Okay, somatic is outside the body, while autonomic is within the body. Okay, for you to easily understand that. So somatic is within the body, as I mentioned, while outside the body, and your uh, autonomic is within the body. So somatic nervous system, okay, we have your afferent and efferent. When you say afferent from the, um, the movement, when you receive the stimulus, that's your sensory, okay, and when that's your afferent, and when we produce the response to that stimulus, that's your efferent. So when I, when I touch a hot object, when I feel that that's afferent, the brain will uh, process that and will create a response by withdrawing my hand. The withdrawal of the hand is the efferent part, okay? That is what we call as your efferent versus efferent. Uh, so just like I mentioned, when you touch a hot object, okay, then the, the, the brain will, uh, that's your afferent because I, I process the information and when I pass into that information to my muscle to withdraw because it's hot, that's the motor response, that's your efferent. Okay, so autonomic nervous system is divided into two. We have sympathetic and parasympathetic. This is easy to understand. Sympathetic means sympathetic nervous system. Sympa, you always think about epinephrine, fight and flight, okay? And these are the things that you need to memorize on. So to give you a very better, better perspective, okay, I would like you to look at into this uh, uh, table. So sympathetic in terms of pupil, dilate, para, constrict, inhibit. So everything goes up, simpa, tataas, okay, para, simpa, ba, ba, ba. Everything goes down, okay, Im okay, except for the gastrointestinal tract. So these are the things that you need to memorize. Okay, whenever you are dealing with sympathetic and parasympathetic, which is the division of your autonomic nervous system. To sum it up, okay, this is the summary of the nervous system. From the central nervous system, we have the body's master control organ. We have your spinal cord, brainstem, brainstem and your brain. While the peripheral nervous system is divided into autonomic and somatic, and autonomic is divided into sympathetic and parasympathetic. 
So that is basically the um, summary of the anatomy and physiology of your nervous system. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe this with uh, in this video. Thank you very much.